Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. As well as my friends at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we had a question in our minds. My assistant Anita and I, we decided to think about doing Tunisian with a texture when it comes to the entrelac work and we wondered if it's even possible. So uh, we decided to come up with a dishcloth that you see here and we actually applied texture to this because normally with entrelac it's nice and flat. So what I'm going to teach you today is the beginning steps. I'm also gonna teach you some other stuff that is not included in this this particular uh, concept because if you want to change the size you can do so. This here was using roughly about a half a ball of Lily Sugar and Cream cotton. It's 100% cotton so I can use it as a dishcloth and a five millimeter size H crochet hook. All the stitches will fit on an ergonomic hook in this section here to be able to make this but what I'm going to do for you because it is a tutorial I'm going to increase my hook size to a 10 millimeter and I'm using an afghan hook and I'm going to be using uh, Bernat Softy Chunky so that you can see the stitch, a stitch definition. So I'm going to teach you first of all on how to change the size of this just in case you wanna do something more bigger than what is suggested than what we have here so you can make the squares even bigger and it's actually pretty easy when you think about it. Well, let me show you how. Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. I'm not very so my analogy on remembering how to do entrelac is that I remember that it's a bowling alley and so the number of stitches equals the number of pins. So the number of pins that you can have in your bowling alley can be anything that you desire that you want. And so the way that I see it is that there, this for example is a standard entrelac. This is exactly what you see when it comes to this particular project here. So this is used a lot because I believe that uh, it's used a lot because it can fit on a regular size hook. Anything bigger you're going to need that afghan hook. The way that I see it is that we have seven chains here that make up this box and it is the the first chain here that you start with is a gutter. So it's the gutter of the bowling alley and the last chain is the other gutter on the other side and here in the middle is the center point of the bowling alley itself where the ball will roll down to hit the pins. So the number of stitches between the two gutters equals the number um, that you have. So in this case there's five. So you'll have five pins. And so this particular one over here will connect to its neighbor always and this one is always a builder up. So this loop here always counts as one of the loops. So if you have seven chains there will always be seven loops in this particular process when you go. So how you remember on how many rows to do is that it's the number of pins between the gutters that equals the rows. So if you have a chain of seven just like you see here and there's five pins in the middle of the bowling alley that means that there's going to be five rows. So if you want to change this so that you have six pins so instead of chaining seven you can chain eight. You can have then six pins. You still have your gutters and so if you have six pins it'll be six rows and etc. And you can do this in a, a multiple a multiple of sizes. So how it's being built is that you're just going to go back and forth and in Tunisian when you build a row it's always on this side going back in the return pass when you go to do it. So I put these here because these are the loops that you'll always have in the end. Now here's the thing. I'm going to show you another concept because I'm actually practicing uh, in this particular um, time of my life. I'm doing entrelac in much bigger squares because people are asking for it and let me show you another diagram. So I'm practicing another concept and here is entrelac and the square is obviously much bigger than it was you see the difference. And so you'll need an afghan hook or a Tunisian hook in order to accomplish this and the squares are about four inches in in uh, four by fours. So what I have here is that I decided when I started to chain 17 and going back to the bowling alley concept is that the first chain and the last chain here is the gutters of your bowling alley and the number of pins in the middle is the number of of uh, stitches in between those two gutters. So in actual fact there's 15. So this means that if there's 15 pins that will go across there has to be 15 rows going up. So people assume that because you're chain 17 that you'll have 17 rows. It's always two less than the number of chains. So if you say you wanted to do a chain of 20 the number of rows that you'll have is 18. You wanna do 25 across then you'll only have 23 rows 
in the height. Do you understand that? So in the original concept when we have it here we chain seven but we only have five rows. So seven chains minus two equals five rows and that's how I remember it in my head. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to uh, take this quite slowly and I'm going to show you in this particular concept on how to do texture when it comes to this. If you just wanna do the Tunisian simple stitch and ax the texture you can but in this particular example I'm going to show you the Tunisian simple stitch and I'm also going to show you the Tunisian pearl stitch and that's what gives it the concept and the back of it looks like conventional knitting here in the back and this thickens up the material so it's great for a dish cloth and it's a great practice sample. So I've rambled on a lot. You can just if you wanna use this it's a five millimeter size H crochet hook with your Lily Sugar and Cream if you're gonna do a dish cloth. If you wanna just practice with regular yarn and put this underneath the plant you can do so and it's a great concept and we're gonna start. So when we start with this in the rounds we start with our first square out and then we do the next set and then the next set and then the final. The way that I'll show the border here is awesome and it will work every time no matter what size square that you'll do because the concept on how to square it off is that good. So we're going to begin and hopefully this wasn't too long winded and if you like this concept you know give me a like and uh, make some comments if you wish to share more information with me. So let's begin our journey now. In Tunisian what normally happens is that Tunisian is much tighter in tension so you want to increase the hook sizes two sizes bigger than the recommendation on the ball band. For the particular dish cloth though I want you to use that five millimeter size H because you, you, you do want the tension you do want it to be tight. So in this particular concept when you do normal Tunisian you want it to relax a little bit to really show that definition. So let's create our slip knot to begin and I'm gonna show you the regular size of the entrelac and doing a chain seven. If you wanna do it texture it just has to be an odd number. So it could be nine, it could be eleven, it's whatever you wish and you're going to begin that. So let's put this onto your hook no matter what type of hook that you have and I need you to start chaining seven. So let's count those out together. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So pause me now if you're not ready yet and we're gonna move on to do row number one and talk about the forward pass and the return pass. In Tunisian when you move the hook like this this is the forward pass and when the hook comes backwards it's the return pass. We will never turn the project around with this concept. We will always go back and forth like a typewriter or like Fred Flintstone eating a corn on the cob. Just remember it's back and forth. So what you want to always remember is that this is considered number one for the loop and you're gonna go second chain from the hook so just count it back and get the back hump of the chain. That is so important in this concept. Get the back hump of the chain and I want you to go in and I'll go slow and yarn over, pick it up and pull through that loop and I need you to move this down. Do you see the shape of the hook? I need you to move it to the thick area so that the stitch will get its thickness and pull the remaining of the yarn in order to get to that thickness and you can wiggle it a little bit. And what you need to do is that you need to collect this like loading up a closed line for doing laundry. So you're going to get to the next back loop and you're just gonna go in. Once you get the first back loop the chain stays upside down and it's easy. So just wrap and pull through and move it down to the thick part of your shaft. So next loop on the back hump, sorry, pull through. and we go all the way to the last chain. So if we chain seven how many loops should there be? Do you see seven? It's the right answer. So how many chains that you start with will be the number of loops that you have. The first chain right here and the last one is the gutters of your bowling alley. So it doesn't matter how many of these that you have they're always the gutters and the ones in the middle are your pins. So just always remember that because it helps you to, to remember this concept. So if in this case there's going to be five rows because there's five pins between the gutters. So let's do the return pass next. To do the return pass 
in Tunisian when we build up usually we start with a, a, a situation and we chain up one and then or two or three and then we start a row. Sometimes they have it at the end of the row but it, normally it's at the beginning of the row. Here what we have to do is that the builder to build up the next row is actually on this side. So it's not over here like you would expect it to be. So it's on the return pass of the hook going backwards. So to do that, to chain one to go home, you have to yarn over and just pull through one loop only. And that is considered a chain one. Make sure that you do get the shaft. Then the remaining of all of these is just a simple yarn over and pull through two. And we yarn over, pull through two and we do this all the way back to the very beginning of just having one loop left on your Tunisian hook. And this new loop is now the next one of the group of seven in the next row. And what you're going to notice is that it's going to be open like this like a fence. And it's in the return pass that closes the fence off so your neighbors can't look at you. But when you return pass you always end up with these loops. And the reason why I tell you this is that your very last row is going to be needing this to be closed off. And I'll explain more when we get there. So this was the row number one in the forward and the return pass. Row number two is a very critical row because I'm gonna show you something that I haven't told you yet because it hasn't applied. And let's move on to row number two in the forward and the return pass. So when we start any rows going forward, this here loop that is right here, you're going to ignore it. You're going to concentrate on the first pin of your or the first here of the vertical and you're just going to wrap in like this and I'm going to demonstrate to you the single um, the Tunisian simple stitch if you would just like to do entrelac with this and then I'm going to frog out and show you what the texture would look like. So you go in and then you pull through. So if you don't want to bother with texture you just go into the next vertical yarn over pull through and the next vertical and you keep doing that until you get all the way and it's the very last one that is the one that you need to worry about. And do you see that once you did that it filled in that fence so your neighbor could no longer see you. You pull through. Now the very last one here if you go into the vertical it's gonna leave a big hole on you. So what you need to do is turn it and when you put this on you wanna make sure that there's it looks like a regular stitch in crochet. Do you see that? The two loops and that's the, what you're going to pull through on the very last one. And this will help keep your work closed. And so that was the Tunisian simple stitch all the way across in case you don't want the texture. And so to return the pass then you just yarn over, pull through the one because it's building to start the row and then you yarn over, pull through two all the way back. Now I'm going to demonstrate which is the purpose of today's tutorial of the texture. So if you don't want texture then this is how you would do it. So let's go back. If So if you make a mistake you can always pull out your work and restart. And I'm going to show you now the texture element to this concept. So let's begin row number two again and number two all the way to the end of the box is going to be textured. So we're going to apply Tunisian purl stitch and Tunisian simple stitch. It's better if it's an odd number for the number of chains that you started with. To do the first vertical coming out, so you ignore this one because it's already done if you look at it from this perspective. So to do this one you wanna move this yarn in front. Just move it, use your hook and just kinda come in from the behind of it and just go into that vertical. And then using your thumb if you pinch that one that's crossing over now you are just going to pick up this and pull through. I'll demonstrate this again and again for you. And that was a Tunisian purl stitch. The next stitch will be the Tunisian simple stitches which is what I just showed you before. So you just go right into the vertical and then you let you just grab the yarn and you pull through. So you see it's a difference of the look. So to do the next one here this is the Tunisian purl stitch. Put the hook in behind it 
and you're moving the strand so it's in front and ready for you and as you slide in the hook use your thumb and just pinch that down and then yarn over and pull through. The next one is a Tunisian simple stitch. And then the next one here is a Tunisian purl stitch. Move the hook in front. Coming in, pinch, pull through. And then your ending is like I showed you already in, or before. You wanna turn it and you wanna put it so that the two strands so it looks like a regular stitch is on the end and you yarn over pull through that. And so now you've just created some texture. So to return the pass is like we learned before. We yarn over, pull through the first loop which is your chain one and then you yarn over and pull through twos all the way back. So the return pass has not changed. It's our forward pass that is providing the texture. And this was row number two. So let's start row number three and I'm applying texture for the remaining of this. So we start and now you can see below what was actually applied. So see how it looks different than this. These when they follow straight up are Tunisian simple stitches. Here you can see something is different. That's your pearls. So you just move the hook behind the strand and push through and use your thumb and it just takes a few seconds. I'm going slower than I normally would. And then here I can just follow the line down and I see okay this is Tunisian simple. Okay the next one is right here. And so I move the hook in behind, pull that strand forward, pinch it and pull through. See you're going through the strand in the opposite direction. That's what that purl is doing. So just move the hook in behind, pinch, pull through. And then the last one we want to turn it and we want to get the last one that looks like a regular stitch to go on, pull through and then the return pass. So chain up one and then two all the way through. So we started off with chain seven. So this means that we need only five rows because two uh, that is taking away from the chain. So uh, seven minus two equals five. So currently we have one, two, and we're gonna have our third really shortly. And third has already been done but it's not until you do the forward pass that it closes down this so that you can't see your neighbor. So let's move on to the next one. Next one we wanna keep on going and we wanna keep on adding rows. So that was the pearl, simple, pearl, simple, pearl. And I'm just looking at the rows below to help me keep everything in alignment. And then the edge. Pull through. And then pull through twos. So I currently now have one, two, three and part of the fourth is done. So let's continue to add more. So we start with the pearl. Now can you change the any stitches? Absolutely. Just be consistent. And then coming into the end and going back. Now the thing that you have to be careful about the most is actually the very last row which is almost now. So I can seriously just count these here. I have one, just count these verticals. One, two, three, four and the fifth vertical is now in. So in order to finish this box I have to end up over here and I'm currently on the wrong side of the box but I still have the open fence. I can still see my neighbors. So when I go to fasten off or cast off, they call it in Tunisian, I'm going to cast off in the process of keeping the texture. So I'm gonna cast off by doing a purl stitch to start and when I pull through I'm going to pull through everything and make sure that you provide a little bit of extra slack because it matters. Then you go into the 
next Tunisian simple stitch, make it a Tunisian simple stitch cast off. So you pull through and through. The next one is a purl. So you cast off using purl method. So it matches your project. So you have the texture all the way through. Okay, and then the very last one here is where we're going to finish. And you still wanna go through the two strands that you will have on the end. And you yarn over, pulling it through and through. And so by doing the cast off process, you've now just kept it so that everything is closed and I can't see my neighbors. There's no open fences and this is my first box. So let's go and determine what we're gonna do next. We are doing this in the round. So what I want to do is that this is the center of my box and now I want to go around this box. Let me explain. Currently we have now the center section done. So the next set of boxes that we are going to build in the round are going to be built up on the four sides directly. So it can be built up on any side but right where you're sitting with your hook is right where you wanna start. So you're going to be building the next set of squares just like this. And when you do this particular concept, it literally follows all the way around that box. So currently we're sitting right here. I need to chain a total of only six. We have been chaining a total of seven but I'm going to explain why it's only six this time forward because the seventh is actually attaching to the existing box. So when we go across, you can see I made a mistake, but when we go across we're going to be going and then we're going to be building it up like this. And so when we finish, we're going to end up back here. So in order to start the next boxes that we have, here we're going to chain a total of six. And then we continue to go back and forth and back and forth and then we end up here. And we're gonna do that. The problem is with Tunisian in the entrelock is that once you come all the way back around you end up at this spot here and you can never start when you're in the middle of something like this. You either have to be here or you have to be here. You can never be in the middle of an L shape like this. You can never be here to start. Just keep that in mind. And now we're gonna begin. So let's build this up. So right where I'm sitting, I want you to rotate this so that these lines appear in this direction. And what we have to do is that we have to only chain six. So no matter what size that you decided to do, it's gonna be one number less of the real chain that you started with because the one stitch is actually in the side of the existing box. So you only wanna chain six this time. So if you did and said that you chained 17 for the larger version, you'd only wanna chain 16 if that makes sense. It's one less. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now I'm a little bit loose but this could actually look like this upside down. So make sure that when you start to work on this that these squares are actually facing the right side up at least for the first one so that you make sure that you're getting alignment. So you have to now go across this chain and start picking it up as if it was a fresh chain. Starting second chain from the hook, you're going to yarn over and pull through. And you're going to collect the six that are on this chain. So the very first one right here, that's the gutter and the last one is right there. And now you have your six. So this is the gutter. Here are your pins. The final gutter is actually in this box here. So right where you wanna go to attach to this box is right here. Okay, it's where it's coming out of. It matches the same one. And when you go in, you wanna grab it so that it's going around what appears to be a regular stitch in crochet. It's gonna be two strands. And you yarn over, pull through. And now you've returned back to your bowling alley. So you have the two gut gutters and then the five pins. 
This time when you do the return pass the way that it's attached to the box you no longer chain one to start. You just immediately yarn over and pull through twos all the way back. You've already connected it to the existing box. And now we're going to start this and start our texture. If you prefer Tunisian simple all the way it's up to you. And so we start our texture again and we started in the same sequence. So it's um, the next one is a pearl, simple, pearl, simple, pearl. And your very last stitch here is going to be the next one up. So see where this is coming out of? You move one up and you just go right into the side. See it looks like a regular stitch because it is and you pull through and then you return pass pulling through twos. So how many rows do you need to do? If, it, if you were doing this sample you need five. So you just continue along So what I'm going to do is that I would just continue to leave the camera on. We have video chapters installed on this video. So if you'd like to move forward you can just look at the video chapters or just scroll the, the player bar and you can see where you are in the tutorial. So each time you get back to the box you just move up one and then return paths. And then I'll talk about when we're finished this box and moving on to the next. So I'm almost done and I can tell I'm almost done because I'm almost at the top of this box. So let's count the verticals that we see. We see one, two, three, four and a half. So it's gonna be the forward pass that's going to close this down so you don't see your neighbor and it's going to take us to this point where, I, where I'm wiggling. So you close off and do the um, cast off with the same stitch work. So it was, we'll cast off with uh, purl and simple stitch. And make sure that you provide a bit of extra slack if you're a bit tense. It will be a real problem for you in the future if you don't. So your very last one is going to be the corner of this. And you're just going to pull through and through. And now that box is complete and you can see that it looks identical to it. And now we're going to move up and start our next box. The next box will be right here. It will look like the cross shape that I showed you. So we're gonna just immediately start and how many are you going to chain? Did you say six? Hopefully you did. So one, two, three, four, five and six and then we come back across and we start collecting the, the, the chains. Tension is everything on entrelac. So if you're not, if you're too tense, it's hard to get your, your stitches in. See how the project kind of naturally turned around. So make sure that you're always keeping an eye on that right in the beginning stages of your project. So okay, so there we go. So make sure the right side is facing forward. You have your gutter and then five pins. So your next gutter is gonna be over here. If you're not sure you can count it, you need to end up here. So one, two, three, four, five. So right where I'm connected is right where I want to do it. I count just to verify and then I join it and then just continue my twos all the way back. So I'm gonna be quiet again as I move on this box and using my same texture you can just use your regular Tunisian simple if you prefer.
and then you move up the box like you would before. So every time you hit the box it should be a fresh stitch that you're using. Do not waste your time and just count your rows as you go. Just use the sides of the boxes to kind of determine where you are and then you can just do a, a, a rapid count when you think you're getting close to the end. So I can tell I'm getting closer to the end because I'm at near the top of this box. And so now I want to count the verticals. There should be a five. So one, two, three, four, five. So now I gotta finish and close the fence down using the cast off process that matches each stitch. So this is a purl, a simple purl, simple purl and then into the side of the box. And now we're ready to move on. So it kind of curls up, that's normal. So the next box is right here. So we're going to start up and we're going to chain. So I'm gonna be quiet again and we'll continue to make another box. So chain six. and then connect to the same spot. Sometimes the stitches look open if you're a little loose. But you can get used to the tension in time. So let's continue to build our rows. Okay, I'm ready to close down. So let's cast off. And then go to the corner and then we have one more box to do before this revolution is complete. 
So we now have to build the box out on this side. So let's start again. Now as I'm finishing up this last row, you gotta be careful because it is the last box. It's not always obvious when you need to finish. So just keep an eye on it and you need the five verticals in this particular example. So one, two, three, four, five. We need to hide the neighbor. So we're going to cast off using the same techniques I showed you before. Now we've now done a full revolution of this. And what happens in this is that your hook is in the wrong spot. I told you that before. So you have to be very careful that when you go to finish this that when you go you're gonna go right into the end that you can never start your entrelock as if you're in a corner like this. You either have to be up here on a point or here. Okay so as long as you're never in a valley you can start your next. Now originally when I learned this concept years ago I thought well okay well maybe I can slip stitch. You will always see it. So I highly recommend that you fasten off your yarn, hide in your yarn tails and start fresh from either this point or this point. And it really doesn't matter. You have to do the same work as long as you're not in the middle. Okay so just point and then you can just fasten that off later. So what we have to do is that we have to start our next revolution and so let's quickly talk about that. So the next revolution is going to fill in these spots here. It's going to add more to the ends. Okay and you're gonna see this going all the way around. So we're gonna do one more revolution. Now I don't need to leave on the camera to do the whole revolution because we have a number of boxes to do. But I will show you what's gonna where I think you should start and then um, I'll show you how to fill in a hole and etc. So how you built these squares here you were building them up on the edge how we did it. I'll show you again and then I will show you how to collect and fill in these spots here. So let's try and this is going to be our next revolution. So it's revolution number three. Okay let's start and we're gonna start with a fresh yarn and we're gonna start right on this side right here. We're gonna start with a fresh there's nothing there but what we're about to do. So we wanna start in the corner and we need to create this box here. So how many chains, so let's just attach it and then talk. So we attached it. So how many chains do we need in order to build a fresh box? Did you say six? Hopefully so. So one, two, three, four, five and six. And then we're gonna collect those chains. So you've done this before.
So you were looking for the six. So here's your gutter, five pins and right here you wanna count the number of rows that you're going to need. So you see one, two, three, four, five. This one right here is the fifth one. So that's the one that you wanna go into. And so you're just gonna put it in there, pull through and then you're just gonna do what you already know. So yarn over, pull through two and now you've officially attached and then you continue to build this box as you know it. So I'll be quiet now and you just add your texture if you prefer. And then when you're ready you move up to the next one available. These spaces here look gigantic because the yarn is thick but in your example it'll be much tighter and smaller. So how many rows are we building up? In this example it's five. You could be doing something else. So I'm getting close to the top of the box. I can see that right here. So let's count the verticals. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So we have our five and now we need to hide our neighbor and get them, and get them behind the fence. So just cast off with the processes that you already know. In Tunisian when you're using special stitches um, you can always use a um, cast off in the same stitch to have consistency to have that stitch right to the very edge. If you decide to change your concept um, when you're casting off it's always very obvious and then you go into the corner. So now we have to, sorry I went into the wrong stitch. So I have to go into, yeah it's actually the right stitch. So I'm gonna come in right here into the corner. So here I'm currently sitting here and I'm going to fill in the box that is existing right here. So now I can officially start here. So I, as I mentioned, I can never be here to start anything. It always has to be, I have to either see an L shape or a bend like this or it has to be a box that I'm ready to grow out like I did over here. So how you fill in these holes is that you are still looking for your seven. So you're just going to collect your stitches across and you want a total of seven on your hook. So we say this is two because it is three, four, five, six and the one that is being attached is the seventh one and that's gonna come through. So now you have your gutters and your five pins. So yarn over pulling it through two and what you're doing is you're building out your box in this section like that. So then continue to move down. So it's exactly what you know. It's just how your execution is, is that you didn't chain to start because you didn't need to. So you only chain essentially that six when you're on a corner piece of your afghan. Everything else in the middle you're just building it and filling in the holes. So when you get over here fill in to the next stitch that's higher and you're still continuing with your five rows. So in a few moments I'm going to be leaving you here and letting you do the entire round on your own.
because now you know how to start a fresh box and you know how to fill in a box when there's an indentation. And then when we come back after that's done I'm going to show you how to do a border and the border information I'm going to give you can be done with any entrelock itself regardless if it's textured or not. So now we need to count the verticals to check. We need five rows, right? So you can kind of see where it divides off into the next box. So you don't count anything beyond this division right here. So one, two, three, four, five. So you have the five. You need to shut that neighbor down and close it behind the wall. And just cast off. Okay, so now I'm coming here and I wanna attach to the next box. So what do I need to do? I need to chain six to get myself started because there's nothing to build on here and then I'm gonna end up over here once that box is done. Once I'm here I need to fill in this space so what I just showed you I'm just collecting your stitches so that you get seven and build it back out and then you'll end up here and you chain your six and do that box and etc. So in this particular round you're not you're building out the corners which are the uh, pieces where you have to chain six and then the rest of it where you're filling in spots is actually the center uh, sections of your project. So I want you to continue all the way around and I'll be back in just a few moments and we'll show you how to do the final border for this. So last time I left you we were going around in this particular round and now I wanna do a border. I'm happy with it. Your dish cloth size will be much smaller and a lot more denser just like me dense. So what I want to do is that I wanna show you how to finish this off. Now right where we finished here is the incorrect position. So if you wanna make this bigger you need to fasten off and either attach here or here and just go all the way around. So you can never be in the valley of anything with entrelock in order to continue. So let's trim our yarn and I'm going to show you how to do the border to make this flat. Whenever there's any kind of jagged edges on blankets people tend to complain. So I wanna show you how you can flatten it off and it can be any dimension because what I'm about to show you is gonna do a decrease and it will work each and every time. So this kind of concept also works in entrelock in rows in case you have a jagged edge that is like this. And I want to start and we want to fill it in and do it a reduction as we go. So what we're going to do is that I want you to attach here. So this is considered a corner. Go here. And let's put this onto the hook. So how many loops do I need to have on my Tunisian hook when I get all the way across to attach to this box because we're still gonna do the attaching. Let me just back you out a little bit. You're standing too close to the camera. And I want to attach and I need a total of seven just like we had before. And remember the seventh is the one that's gonna attach to the next box. So working my way across, you weave in your ends later, you wanna start collecting them like before. And what we're going to do is on this one we're still going to go around but we're going to do a reduction. So there is the bowling alley. This is the gutter. This is the five pins and attaching it to the next box here and you still have your five is going to be your seventh. So here is your gutter, your gutter and your five pins for your bowling alley. So let's go back. Whenever we go back we wanna do a reduction on the final pull throughs. So we're just going to yarn over pull through two and two and two and two and stop. You wanna do a reduction. So these three loops that are left on here we want to pull through all three and that's going to eliminate one of the loops for you. Your first stitch is going to be right here. It's not here, it's here. So when you go to collect again and you can decide whether you wanna do texture, I'm not gonna bother but you can just do your Tunisian simple stitch and collect your loops back over to the other side. 
and there's gonna be less loops because you've just reduced it by one. And so then you'll come to the next one up. Then yarn over, pull through twos, twos, and twos until you see three loops on the hook, which you do. Pull through all three. You've just eliminated out another hook or another loop. So your first loop to play with is right here. See how this is together as one? This is the next free one. So you're just gonna pick up, pick up, okay, and then go to your next box and then pull through twos, two, and then you see the three, pull through all three. And do you see what's happening on this side? It's creating a flat section. It's like a miracle. It's awesome. So you keep on doing this until you run out of stitches to go. So as soon as you see three, you pull through all three. And now look, I'm at the end. And now I'm gonna pull through all three and that box is done and it's been flattened out. So then you just attach yourself to the next box. It's like you just fastened off and then you start again. So you're gonna pick up, so this is one. So that's your gutter and then you got two, three, four, five, and six. And the seventh is attaching it to the next box and then yarning over, pulling it through two, 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 until you see three, pull through all three. Your, your first one is right here. And then you do that. So I want you to go across and then I'm gonna show you how to get around a corner because that's easy, that's easy enough. So finish this um, section here and I'll be right back and I'll show you how to turn the corner so that you can get around your afghan. So when I last left you, we were just finishing off this. So right now, I want you to single crochet along this. This is a corner side. So just single crochet and that will get you to the next side. So you technically will not have a full square, but you'll actually have a square with chamfered edges on the corners. And that to me is not a deal breaker, but if it is for you, then maybe this is not for you. <laughs> so I just wanna single crochet myself all the way. And then I wanna come down and start collecting. So keep that as number one and start collecting your stitches. Two, three, four, five, and six. So there's my gutter, my five pins, and then the attachment to the next box is the other gutter. And then pull through twos, two, two, until you see three on the hook and pull through all three. I want you to keep in that fashion going all the way around and when I come back we'll just uh, uh, talk about how to fasten off your yarn and I'll show you a demonstration on that and we'll be right back in just a moment. So I'm coming all the way back around and because I started where I showed you I need to finish off the final corner of just my single crochets in and you can see then we took this from the pointed edges all the way to the end. So I'm just gonna slip stitch it to the very beginning and I'm going to show you how to weave in the ends using a tapestry needle next. And it looks pretty good, right? So you will see that the edges of the corners in this concept will always be chamfered off. Um, but I think it's not a deal breaker and it's really neat. And you have the texture that is in here. So this is just a larger version of the dishcloth that you see. So you can see change the hook, change the yarn, change the whole size. So let's uh, review quickly on how to weave in your ends. So any ends that you'll have, you'll wanna use a tapestry needle for that. So let's just pull that through and lock it and turn it over to the back side. I've not been weaving it as I've been going so I don't get any good boy points today. But you will want to use a tapestry needle to put that in. And the goal when you do this is that some people say it comes out. You need to make sure that when you ram in your, your needle, don't just ram it between stitch work. Actually ram it in between the plies of the yarn. It is harder to get out. So if you have to frog this out later, good luck Chuck. So, because washing machines seem to have fingers that pull out ends. I don't know, get it. So see, I'm not going just underneath this, this strand. I'm going through it. And you wanna start splitting those plies on the back side on it. So don't interfere with the good side of the work because that's what people are gonna look at and your eyes will go to it as a crochet because um, the thing that we do with crocheters is that we like to beat ourselves up and see our own uh, mistakes. So if you stay to the towards the back side, um, you'll have a less likely chance of driving yourself crazy. But I don't guarantee that. 
So you'll do that with any loose ends that you'll have. So I have more to do and that is how you would do entrelock here with adding texture instead of a flat surface and in a dishcloth this means that you got some extra scrubby stuff in case you like to hand wash your dishes. So that's it for now and we hope you have a good day and we'll see you again next time right here in the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends at Yarnspirations.com. We'll see you.